So tonight I'm actually presenting. I'm Michelle Bonnison. I'm the research librarian at Salem Church, and I have with me my colleague who will introduce herself. I'm Nancy Moore. I'm the Virginiana manager in the Virginiana room where I am right now in the uh, Fredericksburg Branch Library. Um, as my job is tracking history and genealogy and helping people with that. Uh, my background in Fredericksburg is 40 years working at the Freelance Star. And actually my very first reporting job was covering Spotsylvania County. So good to be here. All right, so folks joining us, um, we're going to get started on our presentation. And then if you have questions, we're going to take those at the end. All right, so let me switch on over. And we're going to get started. We're going to be talking about the Waller family today and how they are rooted in county history. And that is because they've been here since the beginning of Spotsylvania County, practically. So right here, you see one of our history markers with some information about Spotsylvania. And let's get talking about the Wallers. So Colonel John Waller came to Virginia from England in 1695. He first settled along the Mattapani River in what is now King William County, not to be confused with Prince William County. He was active in the county and was elected as a representative of the House of Burgesses. He hoped to become the clerk of the court, but had to settle for office of sheriff. He was known as Colonel Waller because of his membership for the county militia. He turned his sights on Spotsylvania County in 1722 when Alexander Spotswood appointed him to slur serve as clerk of the court. He was 49 years old at the time with a grown daughter and five sons, John, Thomas, William, Benjamin, and Edmund. The elder John Waller built a home that he called Newport after his birthplace in England. So as you see, the Spotsylvania County was created in 17. 21, and we have Alexander Spotswood on the right and the Waller family coat of arms on the left. Uh, with many of these, uh, we do not have pictures of these historical figures, so you'll have to see what we do find on them. Okay, so let's talk about him. So he was actually made one of the seven trustees of the new town of Fredericksburg. So we also have some Fredericksburg ties there. And then we have his children. His son, Edmund Waller, succeeded his father as clerk of the court for Spotsylvania in 1742. For the first 64 years of county history, the Waller family filled the clerk's office and many members filled court positions in other Virginia counties. And on the right, we have son Benjamin Waller by an unknown artist as thanks to Colonial Williamsburg. Family disputes. Every family seems to have disputes, and this one was no exception. Colonel John Walter, Waller died in 1754 at 81 years of age, but even before his death, his sons John and Benjamin were quarreling over their land inheritance. And inheritance quarrels also came up in several cases of Waller versus Waller, which you could find on Historic Court Records website. The 1830 case saw Benjamin and his son Richmond Waller against a number of Waller family members, including Edmund and Will William. And as you'll notice, the names come up quite a lot and repeat, so hang in tight. One of the issues was the division of enslaved people in the Wall. William E. Waller estate. So William Edmund Waller, grandson of Colonel John Waller and son of Edmund Waller. Becoming Baptists. So Colonel John Waller was elected to the first vestry of St. George's Parish. It's a land area designated by Virginia's House of Burgess at the time and later became senior warden of the area. Um, as defined by Miriam Webster, a parish is a subdivision of a county, often coinciding with an original ecclesiastical parish and constituting the unit of local government. So as historian Paula Felder writing about Colonel John Waller closed by saying, certainly he could not have imagined within 15 years of his death, one of Edmund's sons and his own namesake would aggressively plant a church in the Baptist faith, which would weaken and ultimately destroy his beloved Mattapony Church. So we've talked about Fredericksburg, and he was in charge of quite a lot of it, St. John's George's Episcopal Church, which the current building was built in 1849. So the one he would have seen was not there and not even built until 1732. 
So he worshipped at the Mattaponi Church, or Mattaponi Church, as they called it. So that grandson happens to be known, John, again, <laughs> was born in 1741. As a young man, he was the opposite of one would believe would become a preacher. He was called Swearing Jack. He gambled, persecuted Baptists, and was said there could be no deviltry amongst the people unless Swearing Jack was at the head of it. So he created a lot of issues. So when he was serving as a member of the county grand jury indicting Lewis Craig for Baptist preaching, which was not allowed at the time, Waller was so impressed by his demeanor and speech that he began to attend religious meetings. He was baptized in 16, 1767 and ordained pastor of the, lower, the Church of Lower Spotsylvania in 1770. He preached in many Virginia counties and was actually jailed for it. Uh, by some, he was considered a bold fanatic who would do much mischief if not restrained. But the Baptists rallied around him as a leader. He, Craig, and several other Baptists were arrested at the church in 1768. They were jailed when they refused to stop preaching. And even while in prison, they preached through the cell windows of the crowd outside. Reverend John Waller, as he was then known, and other Baptist members lobbied for the right to preach, which was granted with the passage of Virginia Statute of Religious Freedom in 1786. The second notable Waller family minister of the Baptist faith was Reverend John Waller's nephew, Absalom Waller. He succeeded his uh, uncle as pastor of the Church of Lower Spotsylvania, which was later named Waller's Church in honor of the two early pastors. And as you can see from the picture below, Waller's Baptist Church still stands. However, the current building was built in 1881, but bears their name. And it was actually featured in 2009 in the Freelance Star that they were celebrating their time of religious freedom and their role in working on the Virginia Statute of Religious Freedom. However, unfortunately, despite the religious freedom aspect, that did not apply always to persons. So census is taken in 1850 and 1860 have this what is called a slave schedule. In 1850, nine Waller households were listed as slave owners, including descendant John Waller, who had 40 slaves. By 1860, seven Wallers were listed as owning slaves, including Mildred Waller, with 112 enslaved people. Another place of source of information uh, that you can look for when researching people who were enslaved is the Slave Births Index for 1853 to 1865. Unlike the slave schedules with which list only the sex and age, the index lists names, mother's names, date, and place of birth. Uh, five births are listed for Mildred Waller's slaves. Daniel Webster, son of Phoebe, was born February 23, 1855. Edgar, son of Mag, was born March 11, 1859. Elvira, daughter of Elvira, was born April 7, 1859. Emily, daughter of Phoebe, was born July 11, 1859, and Eugene, son of Sally, was born in July of 1857. We have here Mildred Waller's um, account on the, slave, the federal census of 1860. So you can see her information, dwelling number, and you see where it lists the first bit of the household. Um, and then the slave schedules as well. So you can see where it has gender and age. Um, that's about it. Historian Ruth Fitzgerald in her book, A Different Story, A Black History of Fredericksburg, Stafford, and Spotsylvania, Virginia, wrote that William E. Waller of Spotsylvania in 1827 willed that my son Edmund received the sum of $2,000 for maintaining two old Negroes belonging to me. Uh, it's interesting to note Waller's concern for slaves who are no longer able to work, though, unfortunately, whether or not that was useful, at least they put in something. So, Civil War. Only a handful of Spotsylvania Wallers served in the Confederate Army during the American Civil War. Two served in the Fredericksburg Artillery. However, most prominent was William Dabney Waller, born in Cedar Point, and William Dabney Waller was named after his grandfather, Dabney Waller, who is located at Cedar Point Cemetery in Spotsylvania County. So you can see the gravestone on the right. 
Uh, he then attended the Virginia Military Institute and joined the 9th Virginia Cavalry in May of 1861. Poor health led him to resign in 1862 of December, so it didn't last too long. In February of 1863, he tried again and joined the 36th Cavalry Battalion as an officer's aide. The battalion then served at Gettysburg, Western, Frederick, Western Virginia, East Tennessee, and disbanded at Appomattox. After the war, Waller was a patient at Western State Hospital in Staunton, where he died in 1920. And the Western State Hospital was formerly named the Western State Lunatic Asylum prior to 1894, so we can guess likely where he was a patient for. Then we have another family member uh, prominent in the Civil War is Robert Emmett Waller, who was a cadet at the Virginia Military Institute, where he participated in the Battle of New Market in 1864. After the war, he became a lawyer and then became Spotsylvania Commonwealth's attorney before being elected judge of the county court. So once again, we've got Wallers back in the court system. Uh, he was also a prominent member of the Wallers Baptist Church. And he died in 1916 and was buried with a number of other Wallers in the Prospect Hill Cemetery in Partlow. Not too far. So, Spotsylvania has had its brush uh, with the nationwide sensation with the publication of Alex Haley's Roots, the Saga of American Family. Uh, the novel, based on Haley's own family story, was published in 1976. It won both a Pulitzer Prize and a National Book Award. Roots tells the story of Kunta Kinte, who was captured and sold into slavery in Africa. He was then transported and sold at the port of Annapolis, Maryland, to John Waller of Spotsylvania in 1767. The television version of the novel starring LeVar Burton came out in 1977, and a remake was done in 2016, both of which the library has in its collection. So, retired district, um, sorry, one moment, Alex Haley and LeVar Burton both visited Spotsylvania to film a sequel, Roots, A Second Look, uh, which is a follow-up to the first, uh, where they met with the Board of Supervisors. Retired district court judge Absalom Nelson Waller Jr. took them to the gravesite of his ancestor, John Waller, who had crossed paths with the Haley family. The supervisors then thanked Haley for pointing our county on the map. Uh... So though Haley's book was a novel, many accepted it as a fact, and that prompted historians to examine some of Haley's claims. They found that Toby, the slave named for Kunta Kinte, was enslaved by the Waller family at least five years before Haley had him arriving in Annapolis, but still in the right line of thinking. Uh, David Holmes, an amateur historian, was able to locate the plantation owned by John Waller's brother William, where Toby, his wife Belle, and his daughter Kizzy later lived, according to the book. Holmes, research secretary for the Spotsylvania County Historical Society, said that the William Waller family lived where the Matt and the Ta rivers joined to form the Mata River. So they were still able to trace a lot of it through our history in Spotsylvania. Tracing the Waller family in Spotsylvania is a challenge. As you notice, many of the names repeated time and time again. Uh, census records available on AnswerHistory.com and FamilySearch.org can help to trace family groups, uh, but censor records prior to 1850 only list heads of household by name. In tracing the Waller family clan, FindAGrave.com proved extremely valuable. That's because many of the Wallers were buried in two county cemeteries, the Wallers Baptist Church Cemetery and the Cedar Point Cemeteries, as we saw some cemetery gravestones from that. Searching the cemetery listings and find a grave yields lots of valuable information about the person, parents, siblings, and children. And for a prominent family like the Wallers, uh, books like Genealogies of Virginia Families, Adventures of Person Person, and Cavaliers and Pioneers can be very helpful, many of which you can find in the Virginiana Room. So we're going to start with a sample genealogy of how we got through telling some of the story of Spotsylvania. So Colonel John Waller, again, born in England, died in Spotsylvania. Parents were doctors John Waller and Mary Pomfret Waller, and those were located in England. He then had several sons, which we'll trace through. Son John had sons Thomas Carr and Pomfret. He also then had Thomas, who had son Thomas Jr. 
William, who had son William and John. Benjamin, who had sons John, Benjamin Carter, William, and Robert. And Edmund, who had sons John, Swear, and Jack, William, Edmund, and Benjamin. Once again, we see the names repeating. Benjamin then had a son named Absalom, who became a Baptist preacher, succeeding his uncle John, Swear, and Jack. Absalom Nelson Waller, A. Nelson, a county district court judge and local historian, is a direct descendant of Reverend Absalom. So right here we have some actual articles about uh, Reverend Absalom Waller, his grandson, Absalom Waller attorney, and Judge A. Nelson, great-grandson of Reverend, Reverend Absalom Waller. Resources. So in the Virginia Honor Room at the Fredericksburg branch, you can find many of these titles, as well as newspaper obituaries on microfilm. And you can check the Virginia Room vertical files with the help of Nancy Moore. So online, we also have places you can search. Use the link for librarypoint.org if you're going to go to Ancestry Library, unless you have your own account and subscription, uh, because otherwise it's going to not work for the resources we can give you with your library card. You can also use Family Search, Historic Court Records, Fredericksburg Research Resources, and Find a Grave. Some of the local museums in the areas, which hours and closures may vary due to COVID, include Spotsylvania County Museum, the John J. Wright Museum and Cultural Center, Fredericksburg Area Museum, and the Central Rappahannock Heritage Center, not to be confused with the Library Center, and the Library of Virginia. So at that, we're going to wrap up and we'll be ready to take comments. I know that's quite a lot of information to sling at people. Um, but it's all just an example of what you can use through the library to find out local information and resources. So we'll wait here and we'll be taking any comments. Please, please feel free to leave them in the box below. And we'll give it a minute or so. And while you wait, if Nancy, if you don't mind kind of going through your process for doing this research. Well, I would hope that everybody can tell a family story. The Wallers, of course, have an amazing family story. Some of it's good, some of it's horrifying, but it reflects the history of the county. Um, you all won't probably have roots that go back that far, but we do have a lot of resources here in the Virginiana room and people who can help you find things. Um, everything that was presented today was found in all of the resources that, that Michelle mentioned. And um, there's much, much more. Um, sometimes people are overwhelmed by how much information there is. So I would, I would encourage you to come down and, and poke around. And so Nancy, we've we've both been through this obviously since I took your research and synthesized it to a presentation for this evening. But what was your number what would be your number one tip for keeping all of those wallers straight? Because that was certainly a difficulty. Well, find a grave was the most helpful because if you found a person, it would list who their parents were, who their children were, who their siblings were. Um, it was wonderful. Um, and even now. Um, we have a, a customer who is looking up obituaries of contemporaries and find a grave is ever so helpful in finding, finding those. And that's free. It's online. It's easy to navigate. Um, I love the Wallers. I, I knew a Nelson Waller. He was a judge when I was first covering the County and he was a character. Um, he, he, he knew his people and he and his wife were both very, very involved with starting the Spotsylvania Historical Society and in preserving um, the county history. In fact, if you really, really wanted to dig into the Wallers, the Library of Virginia has the Waller family papers, which I have not seen, but I need to go look at. Because, um, uh, you know, there, there's so many levels of, um, interest that, you know, it, people go down rabbit holes and get lost in some angle of their family um, and lose track of what they're doing. 
Um, we do have some family tree forms that help people get started with tracing their families back. Um, and they're free and they're in the Virginia Anna room too. Awesome. So if people want to stop by the Virginia Anna room and they want to chat with you, what's the best way? Should they call ahead? Um, I'm a part-time person. As I told them when I was hired, I was retired from the paper. Um, so I'm, I'm in the Virginiana room on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from about 9 until 2.30. Um, that would be the best time to come down. There are other people in the library. Holly Schemmer is one of them who are very knowledgeable and can help you. Um, and it's just a wonderful resource. We have books. We have maps. We have files with newspaper clippings, which is where we found those obituaries. Um, there's just a lot of information and people who come from out of town are, are very pleased to see the depth of our, our collection and um, finding things that they didn't know. Awesome. Well, I don't see any other comments. So unless you have something else, I think we'll wrap it up for the evening. Thanks again for joining me and for doing all this research. That was awesome. Well, come on down to Virginiana. We'd love to see you. All right. Thanks for joining us this evening with uh, the Spotsylvania 300 lecture series, folks. And we'll be back next month. So stay tuned. Bye-bye.